Dragon Ballers, if you're looking to buy a Dragon Ball Super or One Piece sealed product, make sure to get 5% off using my link to Mystic TCG down in the description. You can also sell cards to them using their Facebook link, which is also down in the description. Yo, what's going on, Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. It is a Saturday. I cannot remember the last time I uploaded on a Saturday. Normally, what I've been doing is Monday through Friday content, but now that we're playing One Piece, there's a lot of different content coming on the channel. I know a lot of you guys might not want to be here for the One Piece content. And I did do quite a bit of One Piece this week because there was a recent tournament to go over. I got a lot of deck profiles from teammates and friends. So I didn't want to leave my Dragon Ball players hanging. And I want to do this video talking about the European Zenkai Cup that took place last weekend. I know it's a bit late, but to be honest, we don't have that many events in the month of February or at the end of January. So um, I want to just go over as many events as possible. And now that I have the full data for this event, I want to go over it. I want there to be videos for you Dragon Ball players out there. I know the channel is going to be split between Dragon Ball and One Piece. I'm going to try to find the best balance I can. But today, since I wanted to get this video out, we are doing this on a Saturday. I'll upload on weekends when I feel it's necessary. And when I have more content to talk about, I mean, I guess it's a good thing for everyone, right? So we're doing that in today's video. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe and let's just jump right on in. So we are talking about the European Zenkai Cup that took place over the weekend. And I didn't measure this out beforehand because my face is covering a little bit of this. But uh, we'll go over this in today's video. First and foremost, shout out to The Lookout for creating an awesome graphic. I just love when TOs and uh, content creators in different regions just make life easy for everybody else. So huge, huge shout out to The Lookout. Go check out their channel. I know they're getting deck profiles for a good majority of these decks. So make sure to check them out. Of course, I just want to put my spin on this meta because we are in this new meta that doesn't really have all that many events, but actually has a very, very important event in the form of the world's LCQ. So I do want to go over as much data in this uh, format as possible for anyone who wants to uh, compete in that world's LCQ, myself included. I'll be there competing in the world's LCQ. So this was a webcam best of one pre-side tournament with 70 players in this Zenkai dash pack slash post ban list format. So we have a very diverse top 16, as you can see, from this pie chart honestly there's too many decks for me to actually just make slides for each of them so we're just gonna go down the list it is a, it is a saturday after all we'll keep it a little bit more casual and we'll just talk about uh, each deck as we go through now as far as i know from the time of recording this video which is actually a bit earlier in the week this crimson list has not been put out yet but this just kind of piggybacks off what i was talking about in the last meta breakdown video we don't know how this crimson deck was built it could have been built in so many different fashions crimson is just still such a generically viable leader that you can play a super aggro route relying on the uh gohan beast scr to just kill on turn three as often as possible you can still play the mid-rangey control version with the kyle ken united divinity scr plus all your various combo power cards your dirty burst your counter plays all that kind of stuff yes the trunks hit is significant to blue as a whole but the leader rata to crimson honestly in my opinion doesn't change anything um you're just like the tiniest bit less flexible but the leader is still incredible blue is still very powerful blue might be the best color coming off this ban list but i don't think it's by that much i actually think that with the ban list and with the zenkai dash packs all the colors have actually maybe become closer than they've ever been in the past um and that might be actually a true statement because green has been so far off the mat for such a long time and green's actually creeping back up so yeah that feels like a fair thing to say uh, but yeah, that's what I, that's what I find interesting about this at least. Anyways, moving on to second place, SS4 Gogeta. There are two of them in this top 16, and it's one of the only decks that takes up more than one slot in this very diverse top 16. Talked about it last time, Gogeta is a dominant red deck, but I think what's more interesting than seeing Gogeta here is not seeing any red Sin Shenron at all. I still think Red Sin's a strong deck. I still think it puts out big bodies early and it puts on a lot of pressure that not every deck can deal with, but maybe losing that crit in the form of Haze is actually a bigger deal than I initially thought. I think that players might need some time to get adjusted though, because you do have to play a bit differently now to get Awakened, because if you don't open Oceanus, you have to combo cards now to get Awakened, because don't forget, that leader still awakens on turn two if you have six or more Z energy. It doesn't only have to be the cracked Dragon Balls, so if you don't happen to open Oceanus, you might have to combo an additional card or two to get Awaken, but you still might be one of the best aggressive decks in the game. That's just my thoughts. But anyways, Gogeta, still powerful. That eight drop, triumphant together, still very difficult to interact with. And even though we have colors like yellow, black, and green coming back into the meta, they don't have the same answer that blue has in the form of Dirty Burst. Their answers are 
far less efficient of course there's shin noble supremacy which is a generic answer that any deck can play definitely want to implore you to put that in your sideboard if you think you need help against the gogeta matchup and that eight drop is just killing you and destroying your board but yeah still powerful deck with a, a quote-unquote unfair boss monster unfair just in the sense that it is hard to interact with we do have an ss4 goku xeno though taking third place which is super interesting i would have never expected this in a million years with the uh recent support to spring kai of time i think that's just probably the best black deck but that that stuff can somewhat be splashed in goku although i know a fair amount of the effects are only applicable if your leader is a kai of time but i think you can still play the dual attack trunks you just can't combo from the warp if i'm remembering correctly i'm not sure what all the restrictions are on the new six drop go 10 but still i mean this deck did get support in the recent anniversary box it got a z battle card and i think it also got another battle card in a recent tournament pack so i'd be very interested to see what this deck is playing and i think the lookout does have this profile on their channel i haven't had the time to actually give it a watch yet but i do actually want to do that because i find it super interesting next up we have blue beerus though i think this deck is very strong this deck will probably be one of the reasons why blue looks so good in this format and that just comes down to the simple thing i've been talking about for a week or no way more than a week now and that is just the god ceiling hit where ss4 vegeta rise of the super warrior now pretty much just goes unchecked that card is so powerful and the fact that there is um honestly not much good in the game that stops it again we talked about the answers last time you have like death blaster in yellow and machigabora in black if you want to preemptively call it out but yeah beerus has some auto win buttons it's one of the few auto win decks we've seen in a while and what, what i mean by auto win once it gets to a certain point beerus just wins the game automatically whether it's tab 16 or they get to an unimpeded point of being able to uh play turning the tide plus kale or play the 12 drop we skip your turn and do that kind of stuff there's also things they can do like if they're on uh, i think it's eight energy and they have the you know divinity str in hand they can get to a point where they play a certain amount of vegeta six drops and then just ramp to 16 and untap all the energy and win the game but since this was a best of one pre-side you can play a lot of different answers to beers you can play the cunning cards you can play the machika burras to try to stop those s4 vegetas so maybe that's why there's only one in this top cut here and i do still think that blue will or at least this type of blue this heavy ramp beerus will still struggle against aggro decks of which there are a fair amount so i'm not going to say it's like an unchecked super broken deck but it is going to feel kind of unfun when it gets to it's like you know 12 energy plus turns and then we have aod we know aod got some pretty cool support in the zenkai dash pack that leader seems legit now and we even know it's getting a new leader to tinker with come set 20 so aod is probably something you want to keep your eyes on moving forward uh, just a kind of a tried and true aggro deck it's one of the very few decks that has true free play just built into the leader so you're putting a lot of pressure onto the board the awakened side of the leader though doesn't draw so i think you might be hurting a bit in draw power i don't remember off the top of my head if the new yellow aod leader draws on the back side or not but if it does that's going to be a big big benefit for this archetype so yeah definitely keep your eyes on this one it's only getting more support from the looks of it then we have a set to rainbow vegeto solid deck topped american nationals top some other things here and there deck's just good uh, i don't know how else to put it i wouldn't classify it as a red deck even though it is a red leader and plays some red staples although it is now the only deck that can facilitate uh vegeta resolve renewed which is one of the best answers to floodgates because it's flex flexibility it's incredibly comboable um it's a very cheap answer and in the vegeto deck it can be also just be used for fusion so pretty good stuff there black spring kind of time you heard me say it a little bit earlier I do think this is the best black deck for now. We'll see how Cumber kind of shakes things out once set 20 comes out. But yeah, this deck is just so powerful. This really reminds me of some old school uh, DBS aggro. This feels very similar to Storm. It almost feels like a mixture of Storm and Dark Broly, where you're putting out very big bodies. Not quite as big as Dark Broly, granted. Like, you know, more in the realm of like 20 to 25K instead of just free 30Ks. But you are swinging a lot. You are swinging fast. And you're putting a lot of pressure on in the early game. But now that the game has evolved into 20 sets, we have a lot more things to deal with it. So it doesn't really feel quite as fair, uh, unfair, I mean, but it is still a really, really good deck. Then we have a Master Roshi, a Green Roshi Turtle School deck. We've seen this before, and if, if I'm remembering correctly, I think we've specifically seen this before in Europe. I don't remember Roshi topping any American events, but I think it has topped some other European events here and there. Maybe they just have something figured out that we don't, but uh, this is another list that I would very much like to see um what it looks like because this just might be generic green stuff this might be you know all in on the turtle school archetype which i don't think is all that powerful but this would be one that i did find very interesting the cool thing about roshi is he, as a leader he's very good generically 
he's i think the only green leader that lets you make z energy um quote unquote easily i guess there's also now um extra card broly but you gotta be really invested in the archetype for that you don't have to be you don't have to be too invested in the archetype to make z energy with the roshi leader although yeah i don't know i would just love to see what this main deck looks like and then two gamma which i believe is the only other deck in this top 16 that takes up more than one slot gamma it won the recent uh us dragon ball event although that was a little bit smaller than this but they're both of like you know comparable size events right 50 and 70 players pretty comparable but yeah gamma just seems good it's got floodgates it's got boss monsters it's got z energy generation i think the only thing that gamma doesn't have that doesn't make it completely unfair is like a huge hand size where a lot of these other decks can get to like 12 plus cards in pretty easily gamma it's kind of tough to get there sometimes especially if you don't establish a boo unison in a given game but gamma kind of makes up for that for uh having its energy be an extension of its hand right and android 16 is a very similar example of that um both decks relying on the blue green android stuff but android 16 is a bit more interactive plays more during the opponent's turn um wants to interrupt that way super solid deck we know that this deck is capable of great things thanks to what we've seen on the u.s side of things with uh android 16 topping back-to-back -back american nationals with by the same player so the deck definitely has a lot of merit there then we have a yellow golden frieza this is a deck that i am actually a lot more excited to revisit now that red has taken some nerfs because having your uh little frieza army guys taken off the board by red is really annoying but uh if red is seeing a drop in popularity golden frieza seems like a really good pick i do like it don't forget we played this deck at um 2021 nationals we thought it was a very good deck back then one of our teammates marcus managed to go up in top nationals with it this is just a leader that has enough support to where it can constantly be revisited and you can just revisit this leader and see if it's the right format to play the deck and if it is you're pretty much going to be aces we have a green boo here now this leader got some support uh it got a z leader in the recent anniversary box i don't remember if it got anything else besides a z leader but that that being enough that z leader is very very powerful a 20k base leader activate main pitch one draw two uh it has interactions with the actual boo archetype i've honestly thought of some stuff where i where you could just play it as a generic green deck because once you get awakened as that leader or as that z leader rather you are a very powerful leader and a lot of competitive dragon ball super does revolve around having a strong leader of course your main deck has to complement that but that seems like a pretty solid idea so i wonder if this build was more inclined with just the boo archetype or just you know green good stuff trunks vegeta gets very powerful buffs off of the zenkai dash pack we all know that by now this is a deck that i am heavily revisiting as a contender for the world's lcq it just seems very good with all the support not much to say there and then a blue trunks wrapping up this top 16. another ramp deck um i'm just gonna go ahead and say i think it's just an inferior ramp deck to beerus and also that reminds me there is no reboot goku here the reboot leader we got in i believe set 19 where um you're ramping with the Whis and the beers that go into your energy so that is very interesting to not see that leader here that leader was uh, looked at as pretty prominent going into us nationals ended up not doing so much in comparison to crimson but now that beerus and even a trunks here has topped i wonder if we'll see a um resurfacing of reboot ramp goku um yeah that's something i'm definitely gonna want to keep an eye on but yeah as far as trunks versus beers goes I think beer is just a better ramp deck trunks is similar to reboot goku in the sense that you need your opponent to do something in order for you to ramp beerus doesn't have that problem beerus honestly has the best ramp we've probably ever seen in this game it has an objection that essentially doesn't cost anything it doesn't really cost anything from hand it just costs two energy and bam you ramp it energy like, that's very very powerful in the landscape of dragon ball super but anyways guys that's what i wanted to go over in today's video i know i just kind of just talked at you a lot but i gave my thoughts on all these different decks there's quite a lot of them so yeah if you have any opinions that differ from mine or if you agree with me on anything let me know in the comments below thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next one